What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's carrying on from the verses in the chapter, the end of the chapter before, regarding sin. In verse 2 he says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And we know that God will bless to us the public reading of his word. The reason that we have this tank open and almost filled with water tonight is that we are baptizing a number of people a number of believers who are obeying the Word of God. You need three things for a baptismal service. You need the Word of God. You need the water. And you need the witnesses. That's what's required for a biblical baptismal service. This baptismal service and baptismal tank and water does not belong to any denomination. What we carry out here tonight, we don't carry it out because the Baptists believe it, or the Presbyterians believe it, or the Free Presbyterians believe it, or the Brethren believe it. We carry it out simply because we believe it to be the truth from the Word of God. The only baptism that is spoken of in the Bible is believer's baptism. And time and time again through the Word of God, and I have no time tonight to deal with it, but there are tapes there and CDs. Time and time through the Word of God, we read that when they believed, they were baptized. There's nowhere in this book that you'll find anything about infant baptism or children's baptism or even adult baptism. What you read is believer's baptism. Now, if you want to know the truth about believer's baptism, you've got to come to the Word of God because it is, it's in the Word of God that you find it. It originated in the Gospels. It's practiced in the Acts. And in the Epistles, it's testified of. The complete and utter form of baptism is found only in the Word of God. Now, until you read the Acts of the Apostles, the Gospels, 
and the epistles regarding baptism, don't be pontificating on it. Because over the years, so many people have come to me before or after baptismal service, and they said to me, well, I don't think, I don't care what you think, and you shouldn't care tonight what I think. Our bottom line is tonight, what does the Word of God say? And whatever the Word of God says, we would be better to believe it and to practice it and to do it. So before you pontificate or before you say, I don't think that's right and I don't think that's the way to do it, then you've got to show me some other way that's truth. You see, it originates in the Gospels. Now, I'm sure that there's none of us here tonight that haven't heard of John the Baptist. John the Baptist baptized his converts in the River Jordan. Why did he baptize them in the River Jordan? Because in John's Gospel we read, because there was much water there. Now, you don't need much water to sprinkle a baby. And coming over the the desert, the Ethiopian eunuch got saved in the chariot when Philip spoke to him. And he says, here is water, what has hindered me to be baptized? You tell me that that great man traveling those hundreds of miles from Ethiopia, he was the chancellor of the exchequer for Queen Candace, and they had all the retinue of, of men and servants with him. You don't tell me now that they hadn't water with them coming over the desert. Because they would have had plenty of water with them. So he says, here's water. There was a pool of water, or a lake of water. Here's water. What has hindered me to be baptized? And he went down into the water, and he came up out. He, if you come up out, you have to go down in. So John the Baptist came baptizing his converts. Now, among the hundreds of, of converts that John the Baptist baptized in the River Jordan the Lord Jesus Christ himself was one of them. And you read in Matthew's Gospel that he traveled 65 miles from Nazareth on his own. No friends, no companions to watch him. He traveled 65 miles to the Jordan River where John the Baptist was baptizing all sorts of converts prostitutes and harlots and soldiers, the Word of God tells us, and the Lord Jesus Christ come and he says to John, I'm going to, I need, I want to be baptized. And John says, I'm not baptizing you, you should be baptizing me. You see, John was saying, well, you have no sin, you're without sin, and people that have been baptized here are showing that they're sinners and they're born again and saved by grace, and, and they're, they're going through this water to prove and to witness to everybody that they're children of God now, but that the, the Lord Jesus Christ was holy, harmless, and undefiled and separate from sinners. But he said to John the Baptist, don't you hinder me from being baptized. And John the Baptist baptized my Savior, the creator of all things. He, he, at 30 years of age, he, he, he dipped him down right into the Jordan River and put him down under it. And as he came up, as the Lord Jesus came up, heaven opened and God the Father spoke. And here's what he said. Read it for yourself. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And I tell you, God's always pleased with a baptismal service. He's always pleased when his children are obedient. So he was baptized. Now, I could stop there tonight and I could say to you Christians, you believers, you that are saved, and we're talking about being saved now, we're talking about being born again, we're talking about sins forgiven and peace with God and assurance of heaven. I could say to you tonight, if the Lord Jesus went down into the dirty waters and the Jordan was a dirty river, down into the dirty waters of the Jordan and he had no need to go, could you not go down into a wee drop of water for him? And I don't know what your answer to that is but it's a command that he has commanded us to declare before witnesses that you're saved and you're born again 
by the Spirit of God. If he humbled himself with no friends, no family, no warm, clean water, oh, he practiced it and he also preached it and told his disciples to preach it. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we are going to do tonight and we have the scripture for doing it or else I would not do it. Its origination's in the gospel. Its application is in the Acts. In the gospels, we have the word. In the Acts, we have the water. We have the application of it in the Acts. The disciples at the very birth of the church, the first message that Peter preached after the day of Pentecost in the origination of the church of Jesus Christ, he says, repent ye and be baptized, every one of you. Not one of them were missing. Every one of you. And I say to you tonight in this meeting, if you're saved, I don't care what church you belong to, you're very welcome here tonight. We're not asking you to join the church. I'm saying to you tonight that if you're saved and born again by the Spirit of God, the Word says you need to be baptized to please the Lord and to obey Him. Every one of you. And when you go on down through Acts and you read it for yourself, in Acts chapter 8, you have Simon, uh, the, the Simon who, who, who was a believer and was baptized. In Acts chapter 8, you have you, the eunuch that I mentioned about that Philip was, that was converted, went over the mountains of Gaza. Acts chapter 9, you have Paul the apostle, and the very day and hour that he was saved, that same moment it says forthwith he was baptized. You have the very same with the Philippian jailer. You have it with Lydia. The Corinthians believers were, Corinthians believed and were baptized. And on and on and on it goes. And my friend, there's no argument about it. And when we talk about baptism, baptizo, and I must explain that again tonight, the word baptism, every time that it's used, means to go down under. It was the word that the Greeks used when a ship sank and went down into the bottom of the sea. They cried out, Baptizo! It was the word used when a woman dyed a garment and plunged the garment into the dye and she had to get it right down and soak it right into it. Baptizo, that was the word that was used. And that's believers' baptism. Origination in the gospel is application in the Acts and its identification in the epistles. That's why I read in Romans 6. Listen to what Paul says. As the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized unto death, therefore we are buried with him in baptism. This is a burial service tonight. Because these people that come down into this tank, according to the word of God, we'll bury them down into it. And what are they doing by doing that? Or what are they saying by saying that? They're saying that Christ died and was buried for my sins and I'm not ashamed of him. They're saying, I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. These are not secret disciples. I go to funerals and hear people talking about, oh, no, he didn't wear it on his sleeve. Well, I don't know. This is something, my dear friend, that we should never be ashamed of. This is something that we should proclaim from the housetops. Forty-two years ago, four miles the other side of the town of Enniskillen, standing on a farmyard a quarter after eleven on a Monday morning, that hand black with tobacco. The only clothes I had on me was the clothes on my back. Every other word came out of my tongue was a foul, filthy word. Drinking the bit out, fighting the bit out, smashing cars when I had them. And suddenly, powerfully that morning, no big lights, no nothing like that, but all oh, standing in that farmyard that morning. I tell you this, I looked up in the sky and I said, Lord, is there something better in life than this? Have you come to that place yet? 
Are you sick of it all? We're going up to Christmas again with all the hype and all the corrosion and all the hypocrisy and all the falsity of it and no reality about it. Oh, my friend, we need reality. You need reality in your life. I don't care what money you have. I don't care what houses you have. I don't care how good a job you have. You're still searching, seeking, looking for more. You're not satisfied. Now, none but Christ can satisfy. And I tell you that morning after 11 o'clock, on the last day of May 1970, I, what the Scripture says, passed from death unto life. And I never doubted it for a moment since it. And down through 42 and 3 years, let me tell you, I tell you, I'm glad that I'm saved. Are you? Are you? And then I'm glad that I went on to obey the Lord in everything he showed me to obey and do what I could. He says they were buried, were buried with him in baptism. And as they go down, they're just saying, Christ died for me. Remember, my friend, this, that he went down into the deep where there was no standing. Remember they stripped him naked. Remember they put him on an old rugged cross. And remember this, that he was the Son of God. Remember that when he was baptized between the harlots and the soldiers in the Jordan, that he was the one that created all things. That he was from everlasting to everlasting. That he was the incarnate son of the, of the living God. And he's sitting reigning in the heavens tonight, having destroyed death and hell, and he lives in the power of an endless life. And one day you're going to meet him. Prepare to meet thy God. There has to be a preparation to meet him. And they spread eagled them on that old cross and stripped them naked. The Bible says his visage was marred more than any man. See, you try to work that out. And as they put that old cross down between the thieves, he was baptized between thieves and soldiers, I believe. And they put him down between the cross, down into the, every bone in his body went out of joint. And you say, I'm saved tonight, but I don't want to obey him. Well, God help you. Oh, all you want is heaven. Is that all you want? Well, that's only a fringe benefit, let me tell you. I tell you, there's a joy and there's a peace and there's a glory in serving the Lord and living for the Lord and obeying the Lord. Oh, for a thousand lives tonight, I'd throw them all at my heart. And I know there's people in this meeting, many in this meeting tonight, that just love to come up and get down into this tank again. Because I know that no, no, over the years, the scores that we have baptized here, I haven't heard one saying, I regretted doing what I've done. I've done it for the Lord. I don't, didn't do it for you. I've done it because of, the Lord showed me in his word and I want to obey him. And I want to honor him. And I want to be able to say to him, Lord, now what are you going to show me next? <coughs> so there's a burial. Ah, but there's a resurrection. We will bring them up out of it, you know. They'll be glad to hear that. We will bring them up out of it. And as they come up out, the Bible says here's a newness of life. They're coming up and they're identifying with Christ's death and Christ's resurrection. And they're saying to you and everybody around us here tonight, listen, listen, I, I, I'm risen with Christ. Ah, this doesn't save them. They have to be saved before they get in here. They have to have a testimony before they get in here. But they're testifying to everybody around. Listen, I know what I'm doing tonight. This is real tonight. I'm identifying myself with the risen Christ. I'm a new life. I'm a new creature. I'm born again by the Spirit. I don't need the drink. I don't need the world. I don't need the worldly things. That's what they're saying tonight. With a joy in their heart, they're saying it. Young and old. And you say that tonight, as they come up to newness of life, they're witnessing for their Savior and their Master. Oh, he went down all right into the deep, and on the third day he rose again, and he lives forever more. How do you stand tonight?
Is he your Savior? And he is your Lord because obeying him, we're making him Lord of our lives. May God help you. And may God speak to you tonight through this simple baptismal service, a tank of water, a few people saved by God's grace at the side of the river here at Moy, testifying that the Lord is alive and he died to save them and bring them to heaven forever. <laughs>